Hey everybody, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer, and this tutorial is gonna show you how to create some common hang tag designs in Illustrator. So what I've done is I've just grabbed two images of hang tags off of the internet. Again, nothing really fancy, um, but I'm gonna show you some cool tools that'll show you basically how to create any hang tag design that you want, and we'll do these two examples right here. So let's start with this one at the top. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna grab my rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna grab a rectangle. And we're gonna use a feature called Live Corners. And this was released, I believe it's in CC. Um, so if you're in an earlier version or you don't see this, it's because it's not in your current version of Illustrator. So this is under View. It's called the Corner Widget. Um, it's called Live Corners under the View dropdown. They call it the Corner Widget. Um, Mine is currently turned on, which is what we want, but I'm showing you this because if perhaps you've turned yours off and you forgot, yours will, yours will say show corner widget. So mine's turned on, so I'm just gonna leave it, but if yours says show, make sure to select this to, to show it. And you'll notice that what you get in the corner of your objects is this little circle that when you hover over it, your cursor changes to an arrow with like a little curved uh, line on it. So what this does is it allows me to curve the corners, round the corners of my artwork. Now I'm gonna undo that command or control Z because I didn't wanna curve or round all of them. In using this hang tag over here, I only wanna curve two of them. And this one is actually rounded at a more severe angle than this one is. So I will grab my direct selection tool specifically. I'm gonna click off of the hang tag and I will select this one corner here. With that one corner selected, I can curve that corner independent from the others. So I'm just gonna click and drag until I get that as rounded as I want. I'll come over to this corner, click and drag, and that one's just a little bit rounded. So now you can see we've got this great shape to work with for our hang tag. The next thing I wanna do is create the hole in my hang tag. So I will select my rectangle tool, click and hold until I can get my ellipse tool, hotkey is the letter L to get to that. And I'll come over here and I'll drop an ellipse in the upper left or upper right corner, wherever you wanna put this. I can hold the shift key to make sure this is perfectly round. And now that I'm putting it here, I'm like, you know what, actually I wanna put it in the upper right corner because I would be drawing the front of the hang tag first. So a quick trick to do this is to hold the space bar before you release and you can move this shape around while you draw. Okay, so again, I'll hold the shift key to make sure that it's perfectly round. I will release my mouse and then release the shift key. So now I've got a hole drawn. Now let's take a look at something here. I'm gonna select my hang tag and I'm gonna change the fill color to something, anything. And it looks like this hole is cut out, but in reality, it has a white fill. So if I change this, you can see it's just the fill color. So it's sort of falsely showing that there's a cutout and I really like my artwork to be accurate. So I wanna show you how to cut this out. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna grab my selection tool and I'm gonna select the circle that's the hole cut out as well as my hang tag. And I'm gonna grab my shape builder tool. The hotkey is shift M to get this. Now this is over about halfway down on the left hand side of your toolbar. So shift M gets you that. As you hover over certain portions of your artwork, you'll notice they kind of gray out. Now by default, this, the, this uh, tool has a plus sign. We don't want it to have the plus sign because the plus sign means we would be merging shapes together. We're not gonna go into that in this tutorial. We're gonna cut shapes apart. So if I hold the option or alt key, the plus sign changes to a minus. So holding the option or alt key, I hover over this circle and I just click once on that. What that does is it deletes that, it minuses that out of this other shape. And now what you can see, if I move this on top of something that I can actually see through, you can see that is actually cut out. And what I've got is one accurate shape that has the hole cut out of it. All right, moving on. From here, we could add any artwork that we wanted. I'm not really gonna go into that. I mean, I've got my, I've got a logo down here, whoops. And we can take this and let's say, let's change this to something. Let's change this back to white. So I've got this logo here, so you could, 
you know, drop this on here and add whatever designs that you want. To create the back of this, I would simply make a copy. So I'll select this, I'll hold the Option or Alt key to click and drag and make a copy. And I actually wanna show it mirrored, right? Not dissimilar to how we see it over here because that would be the back. So I can come up to Object, Transform, Reflect. I'll turn my preview on and I can see that there. I wanna show you a cool trick that you can do this much faster. I'm gonna select this instance of my hang tag. I'm actually gonna select the reflect tool from my toolbar. Now I wanna choose the axis of reflection, meaning if my object's here, I want it to reflect over here, not reflect directly on the center axis. So with the reflect tool selected, I'm gonna hover and I want it to reflect roughly right here so that the actual copy ends up over on the right hand side. So with my reflection tool, I will hold the option or alt key and I will click once right here. What that does is it opens up this reflect dialog as well as defines the axis of reflection where I clicked. From here, I've got my preview on that looks correct. What I do is I hit copy Instead of just okay, I hit copy, and that reflects and copies the artwork all at once. The next thing I can do is add different pieces of artwork to my hang tag. Let's say the UPC sticker goes here, and then maybe I added some um, details or a little story about my brand right up here, all right? Um, one last thing that we'd wanna do is to add a string to this. So I'm gonna grab my pencil tool. I like to draw hang tag strings with the pencil tool so they come out a little bit more organic. And what I will do is turn my fill color off and let's say we wanna go with a nice bright colored string. So we'll zoom in a little bit here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of organically draw this string and we might have um, a knot on it. So I'm gonna command or control click off of that to deselect it. And I'll just draw a little squiggle there to draw a knot. And then what I can do is draw the other piece of string that would come out, right? So now what we've got is our little mock-up. That was not the best string. I'm drawing on a trackpad right now, so it didn't come out perfect, but it's a really close representation of what we might get. Um, so you can see that's a really quick and easy way to do this. You probably would have wanted to draw the string and then reflect the tag afterwards so that you have the string on the front and the back. That would be more accurate. Um, from here, if you have multiple hang tags, let's say a main hang tag and a sub hang tag, you could layer them and start stacking them like you see over here, but you get the gist of how to draw these. So let's go down here and let's draw one more because I wanna show you a different way to use the corner widget that we used in that first example. So again, I will just click and drag to draw the edges of my hang tag. Now I'm gonna hit the D key, which is gonna change my artwork to the default settings, which is a black stroke and a white fill. Okay, so any object, just hit the D key, that changes you to the default settings. Again, we're gonna use the corner widget. I'm gonna use my direct selection tool. I'm gonna make sure I have just this anchor point in the upper right corner selected. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna have this anchor point in the upper um, right corner selected. And these are the two anchor points that I wanna adjust, right, to sort of make these edges cut beveled flat. Um, when I hover over the corner widget, I can hold the option or alt key, option on a Mac, alt on a PC, and I can click on the corner widget. And that changes the type of corner radius that I will get. So by default, it is round. If I click once, I get a chamfer, which is sort of like an inverted round. If I click once more, I get a flat bevel. So that's the one that I want. Now I'm gonna click and drag, and you can see I get that nice flat bevel corner. Um, the other one, as I mentioned, is the chamfer. So again, hold the Option or Alt key, and I can get that one, and then I get sort of like an inverted round. That's not what I want. We want the flat bevel, all right? So from there, I get that done. Again, I would follow the same steps as before. I would add my circle cutout here. I would delete that using the shape builder tool. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. I will select both of these objects. Shift M is the hotkey to grab my shape builder. I'll hold the option or alt key, which changes the cursor to a minus sign. I will hover over that hole, delete that. And now you can see that this is actually a cutout of my path. And this example, we've got 
a jute string, um, which is kind of like a, a twine type of string. And that's actually mocked up using um, a real image of jute. All right, so if you wanna mock up the jute string, here's what you can do. I just did a quick Google search for jute string hang tag. Um, so I can just take this, copy this image, and we'll just jump over to Photoshop to mock this up really fast. So once I've copied that, I'm gonna do Commander Control N, which creates a new document based on the size of my clipboard, which is the object that I just copied. So I choose OK, and then Commander Control V to paste that in. All right, so now what I've got, I've got this artwork here, this image, and what I really want is I just want the string portion. So I'm gonna grab my magic wand tool. If you don't see it, it's hiding under the quick selection tool. So just click and hold onto that tool to grab your magic wand. And I will click once to see what my selection is. There's a couple settings in here that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. One is the tolerance. The tolerance determines how many pixels are selected um, in a certain tolerance range to the, the pixel that you click on. So I didn't have a very high tolerance. I have only a tolerance of 10. So I didn't get a lot of the pixels that are like really tight up against the string. So I'm gonna deselect. I'm gonna change my tolerance maybe to 20 and let's see if that gives me a better selection. That selection looks much better. So depending on what you're working with, you're gonna just wanna change this accordingly. The other thing is this contiguous option. The contiguous option determines whether pixels that are touching each other are selected or pixels that are touching each other are not selected. So if I had contiguous turned on, this section in here would not have been selected. Um, it would only have been pixels that are touching each other. So I did want contiguous, um, excuse me, I want a contiguous turned off, okay? Once I have that done, I'm gonna choose delete. Now that doesn't really look like much happened, but if I turn off my background layer, you can see that it actually did delete all of that artwork. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my eraser tool, which is the hotkey letter E. It's right over here on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna deselect what I've got selected right now. So Command or Control D to deselect. And we will just erase the rest of the artwork that we don't need, okay? Now from here, all we really need is this portion up here. So I'm going to come up and I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and I'm just gonna lasso around this portion of the artwork. So I've got my jute string selected. Commander Control C to copy that. Make sure you have the right layer selected over in your layers panel or else you might not be selecting anything, um, copying anything. So Commander Control C, I'm gonna jump back over to Illustrator and Commander Control V to paste that in. Now what I can do is I can kind of mock this up as though it was really on my hang tag, all right? So that's looking decent. Um, if you wanna add a little bit extra dimension, you could add a drop shadow to this so we can come up to effect, stylize, make sure you're in the Illustrator effect stylize, not in the Photoshop effects, otherwise you won't see drop shadow. So effects, stylize, drop shadow, I'll turn my preview on. And let's see, we probably want this to be pretty small offset and definitely a really small blur. That's still a bit too thick. So you can play with this until you get the result that you like. All right, that's looking a little bit better. So we'll choose okay. And then again, we can just add some more designs to our hang tag and we'll be all set with our finished up mocked hang tag. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, I am So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer. If you like what you're seeing, I would love to have you on my email list. I give away tons of free tutorials and downloads and resources that you do not see here on YouTube. Check out my website and sign up for my email list at SoHeidi.com. Thanks so much, see you soon.